Welcome to the Wood Turning Workshop. Hey, you've got checks to write, bills to pay. You're looking all over the house. You can't find a stamp anywhere. You know that feeling? Well, I don't because the wife usually does that for me. But if you're that person, today's project is the perfect project for you. A stamp dispenser. Stay tuned. The Wood Turning Workshop is made possible in part by Woodcraft since 1928 providing traditional and modern woodworking tools and supplies to generations of craftsmen. Woodcraft, helping you make wood work. Easy Wood Tools, offering a full line of wood turning tools with replaceable carbide cutters. Well, I've been prepping some of the blanks in advance for our project, and it's a really cool one today. And I want to thank Gothard Knudsen and Woodturning Design Magazine for letting us use this project today. Now, Gothard made this project. He came up with the idea of the stamp dispenser, but in his, he actually used a carriage bolt in the middle that threads up into the lid so you don't have to do any hand chase threads. Well, we're using threads today, but we're going to be using a neat little jig to do the threads. We're not going to do them by hand. Well, we're using Granadillo for the top and the bottom. We're using maple right here in the middle, and we're using English boxwood for an insert which will hold threads up here. It's a very tough wood, and it takes threads very well. The maple's too soft for that. And all you really need are three pieces of wood. We've got a, about a two inch square piece of maple right here. It's about four inches long. We have a little piece of uh, boxwood about the same size, and then a three inch long and about three inch wide piece of granadillo. Well, the tools we're using today are a roughing gouge, a small bowl gouge, a small regular grind spindle gouge, a detail spindle gouge, a skew, a 1 8 inch parting tool, a 3 8 inch parting tool, and a Jacobs chuck. Now the first thing we're going to want to do is we want to round out our uh, maple. Now, since this maple is only 2 inches wide, I can't get it with a tenon on here that will fit into my chuck. It'll be too narrow. So what I want to do is take this in at an angle, well not an angle so much as just put it in here as a square. And you can see how the jaws actually grab really nicely on that and hold it very firmly. We've got connection points everywhere around so it's actually holding it in eight spots. So it's a very firm connection. So if you don't have uh, wood wide enough that you can make a tenon for your chuck, this is one good method of how to hold it still in a chuck. Now I want to grab my roughing gouge and we're going to go ahead and round this out. Just light strokes and we'll work our body back and forth and take it down to a cylinder. Okay, well I've got the blank rounded out now to one and five eighths of an inch in diameter. Now I'm taking my Jacobs chuck and one good technique with this, take it and go whack. Oops, I'm going to do that again, get a little more tail stock out here. There you go put it in firmly because one of the problems when you bring up a Jacobs chuck is it wants to wobble and move. Well, if you take your uh, tool wrist, your tool wrist, your tailstock and just slightly tighten that and back it off a bit, it'll take out some of that wiggle. So when you go in, you drill a straight hole. You don't have to worry about it going a little bit off center. Now that is a Forstner bit with a one and a quarter inch bit in it. And we're going to slow the speed way down to do this. Now normally, I would drill a hole before I rounded out the blank to diameter because it builds up a lot of heat when you do this because that's a lot of metal surface that's going to be touching the wood. But in this case, the sides are about three-eighths of an inch thick. You can see the smoke coming off right now. Um, and this is a self-ejecting bit, so it's throwing out all the shavings, which is nice. But anyway, uh, if it was any thinner, it would definitely crack the wood. But in this case, I think I'm okay. I've done a few of these and it hasn't cracked yet. But here we go. We're going in two inches. So we're all the way down there. Okay, that's two inches. We'll come out now. That worked out pretty good. So we've got the hole drilled in there now. Now all we want to do is prepare the end of the blank to receive the threads that we're going to cut out of the boxwood. So pull this out of the way so I don't run my arm into it. Oh, that's good exercise. We're going to use our skew chisel to make a rebate inside of our cylinder, and that's going to accept the threads we're going to make out of the boxwood. So I have a skew chisel. I have my tool rest set to where the tip of this tool is right at center level. I'm going to turn the lathe on. We'll pick the speed up a little bit from our drilling speed. 
And we're just gonna bring this in gently and take off maybe about a 30 seconds of an inch first by pushing straight in. Makes beautiful shaving. It really is a neat tool. We're gonna go about an eighth of an inch in. We don't need a lot of depth, but we wanna make enough of a lip here that when we glue things together, it has some strength because you're gonna be using those threads, you know, on that boxwood insert to open and close this um, stamp dispenser. So if you don't have a really good glue joint, they could pop loose. There we go. And since the skew has an angle on it, to make this flat, you have to swing the skew around like this now and make that little lip perfectly flat. Okay, well I went ahead and sanded this up to 600 grit, sanded the inside even because you're gonna look inside occasionally on that. Uh, I want to take this off the lathe and I need a pin real quick because we're gonna be using the chuck over and over for all three pieces. And you want to take your number one jaw and make a mark like this. That way you know where that jaw is. Because when you put this back onto here, if you flip it and put it in a different position, it will be out around. Not much, but enough to really mess things up. So we've got that marked. Now we're gonna take our English boxwood. Now this piece is wide enough to cut a tenon on it to put into the jaws. And so you can see, this is gonna fit in nicely. I dovetailed it, goes in there, nice tight fit. You can even see through the hole there that it's not bottoming out. Do not let your wood bottom out in a chuck. That's very dangerous. It'll pop out if that happens. So what I want to do with this is to take the diameter of my cylinder now, which is still one and five eighths and transfer it to here. So I'm going to start with my parting tool to put that measurement over. Bring our tool rest up. It's just a little bit below center height. Make sure nothing's going to hit. And it looks like we're a little bit wobbly on the end there, so let me actually clean up the end first. And we're going to take our wide parting tool. We don't use this a lot in the show, and it's a really handy tool. It's just a wide parting tool. It's got a lot of strength to it and a lot of stability. So it's easy to make cuts and hold it out over the tool rest a little further. And look how beautifully this boxwood cuts. It comes from England. And it's a very hard, dense wood and it takes incredible threads uh, and fine detail and that's why it does work so well for threads. Okay, now we're perfectly straight right there. Come in and just one more cut. I'm actually cutting with the side of the tool. Can you see that? It's, and it's a cut almost. Uh, a little bit of a scrape, but it's a cut. When you sharpen this and you have a sharp edge, on, you'll have a sharp edge on both sides and you can actually use that in your cutting process. Okay, so we now have that nice and faced up. And we're gonna go back to our narrow parting tool. And now we're gonna transfer this diameter over. And we got a little ways to go, so I'll go ahead and start to cut now. And boxwood, like I said, is not cheap because <laughs> it comes from overseas, well, like a lot of our wood does. So we don't wanna actually use up a lot of this. We only need about, oh, a half inch, five eighths of an inch of wood here to do these threads. It's always good to have, whoops, to have a little bit more wood than you need. So we'll make another cut. And get in there. And that probably is about all we need right there for length on this. Now I want to make sure again though, I'm going to come back and turn the lathe off. Double check here. Then I've got my measurement right here like I want it. And then come back here and see how we're doing. And we're just perfect, okay? Now, if your wood's a little bit messed up, a little bit chipped out, I got a little chip there, we don't have to worry about that because when we cut the threads, that's gonna go away. So I'm gonna drill a hole in that, and once I do that, we're onto our next piece of wood. Well, I've been working on the granadillo. This is the lid part, and also the base is gonna come out of the same piece of wood. And I've been roughing this down to about two inches in the diameter. I just wanna get some of that out of the way. And you can see here is our cylinder that we worked on. And here is gonna be our threaded insert off the boxwood. And you can tell they're perfect diameter, so they match up really nicely. So the point we're at right now is we need to make a hole in here. And so I'm just taking out some of the wood and roughing things out right now. And oh, there's my glasses. And one problem with Granadillo, I noticed, now I actually have a nice finish on this right now, 
But if you use a parting tool, it's kind of difficult to get a good finish. You can see how it tears out very easily. So if you want to come in here and make a nice finish with your spindle gouge, I'll show you a little technique. You turn this on, you bring your parting tool up, and you're just going to make a small shelf about a sixteenth of an inch wide and go in a little bit like that. Now we're going to turn off the lathe, we're going to swing our tool rest around, put it a little bit below center, like so, and then we're going to grab our regular grind spindle gouge. Let me make sure we're at the right height for this. It looks pretty good. And then we're going to start our cut. Because one of the problems is when you come with the tool from this side and you try to make a cut across, it wants to skip. It'll run like that. With this little shelf here, now I can't run and I can just make a nice cut. All I'm doing is pushing down onto the tool rest with my fingers and I'm pushing forward to my body to make this cut. And you can see we're getting some beautiful shavings. Also, the bevel of the tool is burnishing the wood. I wouldn't be able to sand the wood this finely as I am right now because this is a beautiful finish. Look at that. And we're going to have a little lip under here that's going to be critical that it is nice and flat. So that's a good job. Now the next step that we want to do is we're going to start hollowing out the inside. But what I need before I do that is the measurement of the uh, boxwood threads. Now that is one and five eighths of an inch right now. And I want to move this in three sixteenths of an inch. One, two, three right there. And that is th three sixteenths of an inch smaller <laughs> than <laughs> one and five eighths of an inch. I'm not good at the math. And I'm just going to transfer that diameter onto here by touching the tip of the tool there. And you can see now this matches up with that. And so we want to hollow this out to that diameter because that will help us in in shaping our threads and putting our threads, uh, getting our threads to mate. It's a very critical diameter. You have to have that right. Well, we still have our spindle gouge in our hand, so we can start removing some of this wood. And ideally, I want to make this hole about a half inch deep, maybe a little bit de deeper. And this is going to be the inside of your lid, so you can decorate it too. You know, with some nice little cuts and and grooves if you want to. The one problem I have is that the spindle gouge does work when you bring it back this way. You have to be a little bit careful with it because there's the tip is so wide it'll want to catch on you. See, it wants to catch like that. So the tool I like to use is a small bowl gouge because it has a narrow tip, narrow, narrower, has a smaller tip. <laughs> Doesn't take as big a cut and it's easier to control. And see, I'm pushing right into that line. Now this is not a jam fit line, so if you're off just a little bit, it's okay. Because when we do the threading process, you can adjust uh, the threads a little bit. You have a little bit of wiggle room. But you can come in and make a pretty straight line with this. If you don't get a straight line with this tool, in other words, a straight line going in this way right here, you want this to be perpendicular, right angle? Yeah, right angle to this surface. You want it to go straight back. Uh, you can use the skew like we used earlier. So anyway, I'm just going to keep using my little bowl gouge and hollow this out to about a half inch deep. And while I'm doing that, it's time for your turn. Brian from Tulsa sent me an email asking about balance. He says, you talk about balance all the time, but what do you mean by it? And he's right. Balance can mean several different things. You can balance your checkbook. You can balance your diet. You can balance a bat. <laughs> <laughs> you can balance a book if you have a flat spot on your head. Hair would really help right now. <laughs> or you can balance a basket. Or you can balance it. Or you can. Never mind. I'm talking about balancing your body. Because wood turning is a lot different than the other woodworking disciplines. Because in those, you simply bounce your body so you can shove a piece of wood through the machine. Wood turning is a lot different. You have to figure out where you want to wind up on your cut. If I want to wind up here, I don't want to be standing here like this. I don't have any control. So I put my foot and my leg and my body where I want to wind up. So then the tool is into my hip. This is where I want to be. Then I coil my body back, I start my cut, and I just naturally go into that position. 
That way you're balanced and your cuts are easy to control. That's why balance is so important to wood turning. That looks good. Well, I'm prepping our thread jig. Cool little system here. It rides on your tail stock and on the ram in your tail stock. Uh, then it has threads on here to hold your chuck. Pretty cool on that part. And then when you work your way up to the headstock, you have a Morse taper collet that holds a cutting tip. It's a little sharp thing, it's hard to see, but that is what does all the work. So once you get your wood mounted on here, it's all centered up, it's all in the right position, and you make some adjustments here. This slide so you can actually make bigger and wider and tighter thread openings is how it helps you. It does the same threads per inch on every cut. It never changes, which is okay because the way it's built is I can make my female thread, then pop this off, put the male on here, make a flip and adjustment, and it automatically adjusts to where the male threads should be. It's really pretty neat. Well, let's see it in action. Turn the light on here because it's a little bit dark over here. Now you want to turn your lathe on and you want to crank it up to the absolute highest speed it can go. As fast as possible helps. Now I'm turning the little handles on this system and it feeds it in. You want to go slowly because if you go too fast you'll chip out the wood. And you might see a little bit of chipping on the early cuts here, but that'll go away. And with the female thread, we're actually going to make two cuts. Uh, this one's a little bit shallow. The next cut will go a little bit deeper. For some reason, the female threads tend to tear out on the inside. Uh, this is so cool. Uh, and you can hand chase the threads. There's nothing wrong with that. But I always like new tools and things like that, so it's fun to find something that actually might take some of the uh, excitement <laughs> out of doing threads by hand. But you can see I'm just carefully feeding it in here. And now you can start to see the threads forming. Uh, this Granadillo is not quite as uh, tough as Coca Bolo. Um, matter of fact, I thought I had some Coca Bolo in the shop for this project. It turns out I didn't. That's why I wound up using the Granadillo. But the Coca Bolo would be even less prone to chip out. You want to use very hard exotic woods, almost all exotic woods are the ones that are hard enough. Our domestic hardwoods usually aren't hard enough to do threads. And what will happen with the thread on a softer wood is, is that sharp edge on the thread will tear out and break off. I'm going to continue with this until we get really close to the bottom. I want to make sure I have as many threads as I can get into the inside of the lid because it'll be the male part on the outside that I can make longer or shorter to fit our purposes. And once I reach the end here, it's almost as exciting as watching paint dry. And I'm leaning over here to see how deep I'm in. So you turn the lathe off. And you can see that it looks really nice, but it's not quite deep enough. And those uh, cutters are in a neutral position. You actually shift this thing just slightly in now. It goes up against a stop on there. You want to turn this by hand a couple times. You hear it? And you want to start to cut again right there. Let me lock those down so there's no wiggle. There we go. So I'm going to start to cut again. Now we're going to start this back up. You can hear cutting. And we're going to work our way back out now. And it's going to cut that little bit deeper into the threads and make a very clean thread. Now once I'm done with this cut, I'm going to mount the male thread and I'll show you how we cut that one. The female threads turned out great. Now it's time to do the male threads. I have the boxwood mounted. And right here is the cool thing about the system. Let me loosen this. This rotates. And now we have the perfect spacing to slide everything over nice and tight. And now we're in the right position to make the male threads at the right diameter. Because when you look over here at the cutter now, everything is slid this way. And you can see we're going to start making some nice threads. So it's all locked in, all good. Oh, get my control switch to turn things on. <laughs> Got my Googles on, so I'm good. Start it up. Now we're just going to feed this slowly into here, just like we did on the female threads. 
Now with the male threads, I don't know why, but the wood doesn't chip out as much on the outside, so we only have to make one pass. But you do want to go slow because you're taking a deep cut there. It's about an eighth of an inch, th inch deep, so if you go real fast, you'll start tearing it out. You just use a little bit of patience. And we're going to go down about three spirals, three threads in depth. We don't want to go any deeper than that because we need to leave some room down here to make a tenon in a little bit. So I'll go ahead and finish this up, and then we'll be ready to go back and turn the rest of the uh, postage stamp dispenser. Okay, I uh, moved a little bit ahead. This actually is the lid, as you can see. I'm just making a little onion dome right now. Making some nice little cuts. And what I did is I went ahead and parted this off of that bigger blank of granadillo that we had. Now normally, I would go ahead and sand at this point, but I want to show you what's going on. So, move the tailstock out of the way. We'll unscrew this. You can see we have a nice fit with our threads there. Used a little bit of wax to make it smooth it up. You can also see here, I cut into the edge a bit, called a little bit of a rebate, an angle. That allows this to fit tight all the way down to there so you don't see that groove. Well, the next thing we want to do is to take this piece and fit it to go into here, remember? Because this is an insert that we're using. So we're going to bring our tool rest up, and we already have this inside diameter on our calipers like so. So we know how wide that is, and that transfers up to here. So we're going to come into here, turn this on. We want to leave a little bit of a shoulder, just for aesthetics. So we're going to come into here like so, and we'll get our measurement. We're going to come a little bit lower than we need to, to be careful. Okay, right there. I think, eh, I might have gone a little too far down. Let me double check it. No, okay, that's why I cut over there. It's a safety cut, just in case I made a mistake. So barely take any off, and I think, they were there. Now I want to just double check this very carefully because this has to fit. It doesn't have to be a jam fit. I want to make sure it's a little bit loose, if anything. So we'll move this again, take our measurement again, back it off a little bit, come back here and apply it to here and see where we are. Just a little bit proud. I'm going to take a little bit more off of that and then we're going to part it off right there. So start her up, take a little bit more off. That is to be enough. We're just going to part this off like so. There we go. Whoa! And it's down here somewhere. <laughs> okay. There's our ring insert. And that goes into there nicely like so. Okay, I have a wooden clamp. It's holding my cylinder. And you also notice I have a tenon on here. That's to go into the base in a minute. We're going to feed this into the bandsaw. And what we're doing is cutting a slot so that the stamps will come out. Do not try this cut holding this tube by hand. Go straight through. There we go. Okay, Oak. Moving on a little bit. We're working on the base now. And remember, I put a tenon on the bottom of my tube here, of my cylinder. And so I have a little rebate in there. And it fits very nice and tight like that. The rebate's just like we did on the lid earlier. So I'm going to finish shaping this, glue this piece on, and then part it off. Sand everything too. And then we'll be ready to put a finish on. Okay, we have everything glued together now, and we have our wonderful threaded fit. Isn't that cool? Now, you want to put a nice finish on here. I used a wax with an accelerator in it. And how do you get the stamps in this thing? Well, you have to wiggle them in a little bit. That's a one and a quarter inch hole that you drilled in there, which is just enough room to take a roll of 100 stamps. You got to kind of wiggle them into here to get them in. This is where Gothard was one up on me because he built his with a slot all the way through to the top. That way you can just slide them in. And if you have finger problems like I do, it won't be a big deal. So there we go. Oops, lost a stamp in the deal. Anyway, screw that on. <laughs> now, you have a great way to dispense stamps. So anyway, there's my extra one. Um, honey, how many of these are gonna need? That good? No? No? Oh boy. Well, until the next time on the Wood Terry Workshop. Keep turning.
Next time on the Wood Turning Workshop. I'm going to teach you how to teach your kids to turn these great toys. This is where, as a turner, you're going to have to remember what you forgot. Now this is a cool thing. Kids love this. This has got a wow factor to it. And we're only going to go down in here about an inch and a half, maybe, maybe an inch and quarter. Color. Every kid loves color, so that's what we're going to add to it. And do not grab it like this to part it off. For more information about the Wood Turning Workshop, visit our website at rsupublictv.org. Is this going to hurt? Oh, oh, oh. Whoa! You're <laughs> a stupid little... <laughs> Turning's a lot safer. Ow! <sighs> Stupid little kid toy. I'll probably get you in the process. Get back. I don't think I'm supposed to walk down this, are you? Ugh. Hey, Papa here. Ugh, me. <laughs> Public television does not have a very good medical policy, I don't think. The Wood Turning Workshop is made possible in part by... Woodcraft, since 1928. Providing traditional and modern woodworking tools and supplies to generations of craftsmen. Woodcraft. Helping you make wood work. Easy Wood Tools, offering a full line of wood turning tools with replaceable carbide cutters. To order a DVD of this or any other episode, call 1-800-823-7210 or visit rsupublictv.org. This week on the Wood Turning Workshop, we're going to help you keep track of all your stamps with a stamp dispenser. Makes beautiful shaving. Female threads turned out great. Now it's time to do the male threads. Now I'm gonna keep turning this until we get to the bottom. Do not try this cut holding this tube by hand. Honey, how many of these are gonna need? That good? No? 